Hello, welcome back. Today we will discuss hemorrhage thread. So, we are discussing metals in biology. The book to follow is The Principles of Bioinorganic Chemistry by Lippard and Berg. Well, it is a fascinating enzyme, hemerythrin. It is a metal enzyme that means metals are there. Well, in mammals, for example, in human, we have blood. Blood is red due to hemoglobin. But there are many other species in the world which does not have hemoglobin but still they are aerobic species, they inhale air and they are air dependent. There must be some other enzyme which is responsible for carrying the oxygen in different parts of their body. The job this is done in the invertebrates or marine invertebrates by hemerythrin. These hemerythrin are um, having two iron centers as you can see this is a uh, reversible dioxygen binding in hemerythrin. This is the reduced form of hemerythrin also known as deoxyhemerythrin. Iron centers are in plus 2 oxidation state. Each of the iron is having 3 histidine or sorry 3 histidine in one of them and on other one we are having 2 histidines. So, it is a di iron center that is responsible for oxygen carrying in those species where we do not have hemoglobin. Not for all of them, but for mainly those which are marine invertebrates. Those are the species looks like this is something like um, the species which looks like these are having this hemerythrin. Now, as you have seen 3 nitrogen or the histidine coordinations are there on iron, 2 histidine coordinations are there on this other iron. They are linked by aspartate and glutamate these are bridging carboxylate linkage. In addition to aspartate and glutamate, they are also having hydroxy bridging between them. This is crystallographically characterized intermediate. So, it is very clear that this is what we have in the deoxyhemerythrin. Upon binding with oxygen, because they are oxygen carrier, a new species is formed where oxygen is reduced doubly. That means, each of the iron will provide one electron and will form a peroxo species. So, oxygen is 2 minus, 1 minus is bound over there and another minus is picking up the proton from this hydroxo. Overall, it is forming di iron 3 hydroperoxo species bridged by a mu oxo species now. So, that is quite fascinating. Well, here during this oxygen binding and electron transfer process a proton coupled electron transfer happened. So, this, this overall transfer of this proton happened in a PCET mechanism by a PCET mechanism. One can utilize the resonance Raman data to characterize these fully oxidized oxyhemerythrin diiron species. Resonance Raman data shows that this oxygen oxygen stretch is around 844 wave number. We will see in the next slide what this means. I can tell you in advance that this means that this is a hydroperoxo species, this is a peroxo oxygen oxygen stretch that is around this 844 wave number region. Resonance Raman also says that this iron oxo iron stretch, this iron oxo iron symmetrical stretch is, uh, is around 486 wave number. 
and the asymmetric stretch is around 757 wave number for this iron oxo iron. Well, as I mentioned these are found in marine invertebrates and this is the deoxyform of the hemerythrin which is colorless, these are diiron 2 species bridged by glutamate and aspartate and hydroxy completely colorless species. Oxyhemerythrin upon binding with oxygen the oxyhemerythrin is forming these are having both the iron in plus 3 oxidation state and this species is red in color. This was a colorless species turning into red upon oxygen binding. Well, one can assume that there is another intermediate that can be there or one can perhaps characterize them that could be a iron 2, iron 3 intermediate which is basically called the semi met hemerythrin which is inactive. I hope it is crystal clear for you guys that hemerythrin is the oxygen transport protein for a number of species such as those marine vertebrates. They do not have hemoglobin like us, they, their blood is, is not really made up of hemoglobin. Okay. Now, these are the species which will carry oxygen and most importantly just like every oxygen transporting protein, the oxygen binding has to be reversible. They should be this should be easily settling between deoxy form and the oxy form. This is quite intriguing that during oxygen binding it gets reduced doubly to peroxo not only that a proton coupled electron transfer process is involved. This such a compound is really fascinating as you may have noticed one side is having 3 histidine another side have 2 histidine therefore the oxygen binding site is open or available only on this iron center not on the other iron center. This means that nature has really designed it perfectly so that everything remains as much constant as possible but only this subtle oxygen transport or oxygen binding can happen at one of the iron center. Let us look at um, the resonance Raman uh, data for the various oxygen derived species. If it is oxygen O2 the from air this oxygen oxygen stretch would be at 1580 wave number. If it is oxidized form of oxygen wh where oxygen oxygen bond is stronger then we have a increase in the oxygen oxygen stretch stretch from 1580 to 1905 wave number. Similarly, there is a change in the oxygen oxygen distance from 1.21 angstrom to 1.12 angstrom. But if oxygen is reduced by one electron which is known as superoxide, this oxygen oxygen stretch goes down to around 100, uh, uh, 1097 wave number and the oxygen oxygen distance increases because now it is reduced by one electron. If it is reduced by two electrons from this molecular oxygen, if it is reduced by two electron this species is called peroxide, peroxo or peroxide this is the superoxo. Now this peroxide species uh, will have a further decrease in oxygen oxygen stretch around 800 wave number. Of course these value may vary slightly but as you can see nearly 300 wave number difference is there even if they are varying depending on the ligand on the metal center still it will be very characteristic to a particular species whether this is a superoxo, peroxo these are almost a fingerprint spectral features that can be seen in these oxygen bound compounds. As you have noticed that the oxygen oxygen stretch goes up significantly to 1.49 angstrom. Okay. Remember what we have seen in, in the, in the oxyhemerythrin case that uh, oxygen oxygen stretch was 844 wave number. Okay. So, 844 wave number is the oxygen 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 stretch. Now, if you try to match that, that is falling in this region that this is a peroxide in nature. right? <coughs> And more importantly as you will see uh, that oxyhemoglobin 
has this uh, oxygen bound in an superoxo format, but you see that superoxo stretching is matching quite well with that of those, those expected. So, 1097 and uh, observed is 1105 that is fantastic. I mean uh, these are quite interesting. So, these can serve as a, as a very readily available tool to confidently identify any reactive intermediate such as those we have seen in, uh, in hemerythrin, oxymyoglobin, hemoglobin and even, even hemocyanin and so on. Many different oxygen containing species can be characterized very easily by such resonance Raman spectral data. Moving on, well there is earlier studies um, which shows that uh, there is this um, crystal structure that is I believe somewhere in 1980s, I forgot to put the reference here. Um, so, this is azidomethemerythrin, uh, erythrin, so uh, azidomethemerythrin. Now, in this case, uh, in the last case as you see that um, 2 histidine was there and the vacant coordination site was binding oxygen, but before those structure were known this structure was first reported with an azido binding group and later on these sort of species or similar species with acetonitrile or OTF other species are also known. So, this vacant coordination site can be easily probed and these 3 histidine as you can see are definitely they are on another one and these aspartate and glutamate binding as well as the hydroxy binding is there. This is an inactive form of the protein. So, this protein crystal structure, uh, this contains a mu oxo di iron 3 core. So, this is the mu oxo di iron 3 core and uh, this is artificially of course oxidized. The azido ion, this is the azido ion occupies the place of hydroperoxo anion in oxyhemerythrin as we have mentioned. Uh, earlier that this is the site is now actually bound by uh, by, uh, by by this uh, by this azido uh, the hydroperoxo is not there that's why azido uh, it is bound with azido anion and uh, these are the early crystal structure which is clearly showing uh, showing the characteristic um, core of this di iron center there is antiferromagnetic spin exchange between the two iron center, uh, the two high spin iron 3 center in this case are, are exchanging their spin through these oxo bridge right. So, these are early studies, but quite informative about um, the, the relative orientation, relative binding and, and the core of the hemerythrin. Okay. There are a number of studies that is done. Uh, towards mimicking such azido, uh, azido met, met uh, myohemerythrin structure. So, this is this is from uh, this, uh, this uh, 1983 report as you can see clearly 3 histidine on one iron, 2 histidine on another iron as well as the azido group. Now, there are and then the bismuoxo bridging uh, is between their um, mu oxo bridging is there not this mu oxo bridging single mu oxo bridging is there between the two iron center right. Now, to mimic such species scientists or the synthetic chemist has uh, worked long and quite successfully and now uh, the, the, the model of these species has been reported. This is an earlier attempt where trispyrazolyl borate ligand system has been used for synthesizing this di iron based system and as you can see these are the uh, acidate bound intermediate bridge between the two iron center as well as the oxo bridge is there. But one thing that is missing is the vacant coordination site. Both the iron center are having three iron center once again this is a model study right synthetic study. This is not really the enzyme this is a synthetic study which clearly shows that uh, each irons are having 3 nitrogen or, uh, and uh, both of them, but as you uh, would remember in the enzyme on one side there is only 2 histidine or the 2 nitrogen. Okay. These sort of mimicking studies are quite exciting okay. because although, although in this case it is not the correct mimic, but these initial attempts lays the pathway for for the future generation studies which, which takes 
quite a lot of inspiration and then subsequently we are able to exactly match this sort of structure or the enzyme deoxy even the oxyhemerythrin structure we will see those shown. This is a X-ray structure of oxyhemerythrin back in 1991. This is clearly shows that these irons, two iron center in the deoxy form, the hydroxyl bridging is there during oxygen reaction or oxygenation leads to this hydroperoxyl intermediate and this as you can see the plot clearly shows that this hydroperoxyl is bound over there. And uh, I must tell you that this hemerythrin or um, hemerythrin is readily crystallizable, almost easily it is one of those enzyme which can be crystallized quite easily. And it, it was quite amazing to get this crystal structure even with the oxygen bound form, right. Well, a number of studies has been done. This is one study by Professor Steve Lippard group himself. And in these, in these cases, this dioxygen binding chemistry of hemerythrin modeling is done. Uh, one of the thing that we mentioned in the last case that although this tree spirogelyl borate mimicking was uh, quite good and the early stage of those mimicking those were effective mimic, but, but uh, one too many ligand were there instead of 3 histidine one and 2, two histidine motif it was 3 histidine 3 histidine motif or 3 nitrogen and 3 nitrogen motif. You must know that it is not essential uh, to mimic exactly the histidine you can you can perhaps play with pyridine you can add pyridine or imidazole I mean you know all these mimicking studies with essentially deal with the same heteroatom. So, histidine has nitrogen coordination with iron synthetic chemist will take any ligand that has nitrogen coordination it could be aromatic I mean it could be pyridine nitrogen it could be aliphatic nitrogen it could be any in let us say imidazole nitrogen which mimics quite well the uh, histidine. It, 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 it is not limited to just the histidine any nitrogen containing ligand is fine. Uh, in these cases uh, a series of such compound been synthesized and uh, it is quite interesting to note that it is instead of two uh, 3 histidine now, now it has taken uh, the researcher have taken two, uh, 2 nitrogen on each of the iron and one of them is having OTF and uh, subsequently this OTF coordination can be let us say let us say displaced by another nitrogen coordination such as imidazole or, or suitable pyridine coordination or even azido coordination overall any solvent or an extra monodented ligand can be ligated while displacing this OTF. But quite interestingly the oxygen chemistry done at low temperature shows that the hydroperoxo species can form in the synthetic complex. Okay. So, synthetic modeling gives an opportunity to better understand the enzyme itself what happens to, to the uh, synthetic chemistry modeling if it is perfect then it is going to perfectly match those data of the, uh, of the, of the, of the natural enzyme. So, that is to be able to mimic and to be able to perform the chemistry in greater detail and in, in absolutely complete detail is quite exciting for synthetic chemist because this sort of uh, its sort of understanding and ability can lead to a great catalyst synthesis synthesis and it can have implication in understanding the process as well as if there is any deficiency that can be deficiency of the of the enzyme study that can be kind of uh, kind of um, overcome by by these synthetic mimic studies in these cases although enzyme studies are quite quite good and known but uh, a number of cases enzyme studies will not be known a lot of uh, lot of metallo enzyme studies are not that very easy therefore these sort of synthetic studies are quite exciting okay um, you must be very excited to note that humans effort to understand and mimic this hemerythrin was quite successful. Okay. If you look at the data of this, uh, this compound which is a iron hydroperoxo species all the spectroscopic data including Mach bar, resonance Raman, UVB spectra matches almost, almost as close as one can get 
perhaps can think of getting right. So, that is fascinating and, uh, and, uh, and these are some of those examples that we were talking uh, that these are the bi bidentate ligand system different easily preparable bidentate ligand system can be employed these are some, some, some of the representative example and these were done quite quite beautifully as you have seen the oxygen oxygen stretch remember it was 842. 2 is I believe now it is 844 OM number or, or exactly 844 OM number previously. And not only that um, it is also possible to level the oxygen. So, it was normal oxygen and then weighting leveled oxygen this shifts resonance Raman spectra data shifts from 844 OM number to 798 wave number that is quite fascinating. UV visible spectra is quite characteristic of what has been seen in case of the enzyme itself. So, this is uh, one of one such compound where this um, this uh, sort of ligand and then a N-methyl imidazole is attached and the hydroperoxo species is also formed. This is once again the report by Professor um, Steve Lippard's group. So, I hope uh, you, you are able to get some sense that this mimic synthetic mimic are going to be quite useful in, in understanding these enzymes and the greater details and the ability to understand almost every aspects of, of a metal enzyme which has been perfected by, by nature I think is quite remarkable. Okay. So, let us uh, let us try to overview this, uh, this class what we have discussed so far. We have seen we have seen that this hemerythrin is part of in marine invertebrates and these are the diiron center completely bridged um, bridged species with bridged by by multiple ligand as you can see one aspartate one glutamate and one hydroxide this is an unsymmetrical diiron core one side is 3 histidine another side is 2 histidine it reacts with oxygen and binds oxygen at this vacant side of the second iron center and form a peroxo but not just any peroxo it is a hydroperoxo um, while formation it is undergoing a proton coupled electron transfer right. So, this is really really clear I hope and this oxygen oxygen stretch is um, 844 OM number exactly the number also matched by the synthetic analogs or synthetic mimic where 3 nitrogen not need not be necessarily histidine, but 3 nitrogen from the ligand is mimicking not only on this side of, of, of the enzyme core, but also the left hand side with 2 nitrogen and 1 hydroperoxo along with this oxo bridge. This sort of mimic, this sort of structure is completely mimic. Uh, of course, it, it uh, there has been a continuous effort in understanding this enzyme over decades. Now, we are in a position when we believe that we, we understood in really great detail. Um, but initial studies back in 70s and 80s were, were quite, quite, uh, quite preliminary I would say which has been matured over the years and decades. Uh, quite interestingly um, I, I hope you also noted that uh, this resonance Raman is, is quite exciting tool for this sort of species or this sort of intermediate characterization because you, you must be uh, understanding that these intermediates are very, very sensitive. These are um, often, most often these are only low temperature stable intermediate. You will not be able to see these intermediate at, at room temperature and that is, that is quite, quite phenomenal to mimic I would say. And then um, thanks to these spectroscopic technique which, which, is, which is now taken as a standard in characterizing these species with or without the crystal structure. Now, these oxygen oxygen stretch are invariably going to dictate uh, the assignment of the right species. For example, as you have seen uh, if it is getting reduced the stretching goes down as well as the length of the oxygen oxygen bond goes up, but uh, for that you have to have the crystal structure right that is quite quite. Uh, not feasible in a lot of cases and therefore, therefore this short of this short of studies are quite important just to have a resonance Raman structure uh, or resonance Raman assigned spectra 
uh, will, will tell you what is there in, in, in reality. Of course, getting a crystal would be perfect, but life is not that not that rosy all the time. Uh, most often for these sort of species you have to rely on spectroscopic techniques such as low temperature UV visible spectra, uh, resonance Raman and if possible let us say low temperature EPR and NMR if it is feasible or MOS boyers or in addition to that uh, for iron for example iron centers this is the MOS boyer spectra will be quite quite uh, amazing uh, to characterize uh, specifically to tell what sort of spin state is there, what is the electronic configuration and most importantly there are other spectroscopic technique in addition to the X-ray crystallography if X-ray is there that is fantastic if it is not available also the XAS, JAS, XAPS these sort of different spectroscopic technique can be used to further characterize this intermediate with almost 100 percent confidence for these sort of species. And uh, those are very sensitive studies and of course mind you that these are also very expensive studies, but nonetheless those can be now routinely done thanks to the development over the last few decades which has made these possible, made possible characterization of these species in greater detail. We have seen the agido bound uh, hemorrhythrin and the mimicking aspect of these how and what people have done some of it there are many studies that has been done we did not get into the detail to keep it simple. So, uh, there were initial attempt which were almost as good, but uh, then th that was not mimicking the vacant coordination site iterative designing then has address that issue this is the crystal structure showing exactly what we have seen in the earlier drawing. This is uh, this is the um, phenomenal studies by Lippert group which exactly mimic what we, we have seen in the enzyme. With this let me conclude then that uh, we are able to able to see see this uh, these um, spectral features as well as the uh, human efforts to understand these enzymes in greater detail. So, keep studying hemorrhythrin and other related topics and we will get back to you soon uh, in the next class. Thank you.